In his capacity as king of Macedonia and Persia and one of history's greatest military strategists, Alexander the Great built the biggest empire the ancient world had ever known, inspiring such loyalty in his followers that they would follow him anywhere and, if necessary, die in the process. Alexander was by turns seductive and brutal, intelligent and power-hungry, diplomatic and cruel. Welcome to my channel. There is a small reminder before starting our discussion. If this is the information you are really interested in, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for notifications in any newly uploaded video, and stay till the end of the video so that you don't miss any interesting videos like this. Now let's continue our discussion. Alexander III was born to King Philip II and Queen Olympias in 356 BC in Pella, Macedonia. However, according to tradition, Zeus, the supreme ruler of the Greek gods, was actually his father. In terms of his own right, Philip II was a capable general. He made the Greek peninsula's northern region of Macedonia into a power to be contended with and harbored aspirations of capturing the vast Persian Empire. Alexander's father had previously been a recognizable figure. He was a great politician and military commander. He transformed Macedonia into a military and cultural powerhouse by the use of force and political scheming, which was an astounding achievement considering that Macedonia was essentially Greece's hinterland in antiquity. But Philip's goals went beyond only protecting Macedonia. He also had a desire that would be carried on by his son Alexander to subdue the vast Persian Empire. When Persia was a global empire, it was a leader in many branches of science and philosophy. It was also supported by a powerful military that made numerous attempts to subdue the obstinate and resistant Greeks. When he tamed the massive stallion with a fierce attitude known as Bucephalus at the age of 12, Alexander displayed great bravery. For the majority of his life, Alexander fought beside the horse. Philip asked the great philosopher Aristotle to instruct his son when Alexander was 13 years old. Alexander's passion for literature, science, medicine, and philosophy was inspired and encouraged by Aristotle. When Philip left his son in command of Macedonia and entered the fight, Alexander was just 16 years old. The Battle of Chaeronea, which took place in 338 BC, was Alexander's chance to demonstrate his military might. He led a cavalry against the sacred band of Thebes, a purportedly unstoppable elite army consisting solely of male lovers. The sacred band of Thebes was utterly destroyed by Alexander's cavalry when he displayed his ferocity and bravery. Alexander rises to the throne. Alexander's father Philip was killed by his bodyguard Pausanias in 336 BC. At the age of 20, Alexander ascended to the throne of Macedonia and put an end to his enemies' attempts to overthrow him. Additionally, he put down independence-related uprisings in northern Greece. Alexander departed to carry on his father's legacy and expand Macedonia's dominance of the world. Alexander sent his troops to Persia and named the general Antipater as regent. At the Granicus River, they encountered Persian and Greek armies after crossing the Hellespont, a constricting strait that separates the Aegean Sea from the Sea of Marmara. Alexander and the Macedonians triumphed. Alexander then moved south and captured Sards with ease. But in the cities of Miletus, Mylasa, and Halicarnassus, his troops ran against opposition. Halicarnassus, which was under siege but was unconquered, resisted for long enough for King Darius III of Persia, the most recent monarch, to gather a sizable force. Gordian Knot Alexander traveled north from Halicarnassus to Gordium, the location of the famous Gordian Knot, a collection of intricate knots fastened to an antique cart. According to legend, whoever loosened the knot would rule over all of Asia. According to the legend, Alexander attempted the task but was unable to remove the knot by hand. He adopted a different strategy and used his sword to cut through the knot while celebrating victory. Battle of Gagamila Commonly known as the Battle of Arbila, this conflict took place on October 1, 331 BC, and was the final step in Alexander the Great's conquest of Darius III's Persian Empire. It was a remarkable victory when on Persian chosen territory over a larger army in terms of numbers. In October 331 BC, Alexander confronted Darius and his enormous army at Gagamila after taking Egypt. After intense battle and significant casualties on both sides, Darius escaped and was killed by his own soldiers. 
Alexander reportedly found Darius dead with sadness and gave him a royal burial. Alexander declared himself king of Persia after finally defeating Darius. However, Bessus, another Persian ruler who is rumored to have killed Darius, additionally claimed the throne. Alexander was unable to accept the assertion. Following Alexander's continuous pursuit, Bessus's soldiers surrendered to Alexander's close friend Ptolemy, who had Bessus killed and dismembered. After Bessus was defeated, Alexander enjoyed complete dominance over Persia. Battle of the Hydaspes Alexander invaded Punjab in India in 327 BC. Some tribes submitted respectfully, while others did not. Alexander and King Porus of Kaurava met in 326 BC along the Hydaspes River. Although Porus' army lacked Alexander's level of experience, they did possess a secret weapon. Do you know who they are? Yes, they are elephants. Nevertheless, Porus was overcome after a bloody struggle in a violent rainstorm. At Hydaspes, Alexander experienced one tragic event. That was the passing of his cherished horse, Bucephalus. Do you know what Alexander did in tribute to him? Alexander named the city of Bucephala after him, though it is unknown if he passed away from combat injuries or old age. Alexander was persuaded to go back to Persia by his leaders when his war-weary warriors declined to pursue his plan to try to conquer all of India. Alexander then led his army along the Indus River before being moodily wounded by the Mali. After he recovered, he split his army, sending half to Jidrosia, a lonely region west of the Indus River, and the other half back to Persia. After several battles to conquer many nations like Egypt, Mesopotamia, Persia, Afghanistan, Syria, Phoenicia, Anatolia, and Syria, despite having one of the shortest reigns in history due to his unexpected death at the age of 32, Alexander's empire turned out to be short-lived. Some think he was poisoned by political opponents, and he had many of them on both the Greek and Persian sides. Others, however, contend that he passed away from malaria while traveling in India. Alexander's death turned out to be the only thing keeping the fragile empire he had built together, and it instantly started to fall apart after his passing. His generals started fighting among themselves in an effort to take over as the new supreme leader. Guys, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Thanks for being to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and tell us what you think about this video below in the comment section.